so we have seen how we can create a task or delete a task and uh, in our previous example we have used this function we task delay to introduce a delay inside our task function uh, there are some things that you need to know about this function we talk delay is that the input parameter 1000 does not mean it is 1000 milliseconds instead it is the number of ticks or the number of cpu ticks that the that the kernel runs on so if you go ahead and look into the free autos config.h file and you can see that the tick rate is 1000 cpu cycle it means a single tick cycle or the queue time uh, that the kernel is aware of or the kernel runs on so if i go ahead and if i make it a bit faster let's say i make it 5000 and and i just leave it as 1000 in that case i will not get exact 1000 milliseconds delay and this will run five times faster so i will have just 200 milliseconds delay let's run that and let's see yeah let's keep running it so you see it starts printing hello world like very fast so this is printing at 200 milliseconds so how can i use this function vtos delay without uh, you know, caring about what value i have in my as my clock tick rate what i can do is I, i'm going to use this equation here i'm going to take the number of milliseconds that i want to wait for and i multiply it with the tick rate and i divide it by 1000 now this is going to fix the problem and then it's going to give me a delay of exact 1000 milliseconds uh, let's build that let's see There you go, it's printing hello world every one second. So this equation will give you the delay that you want, but sometimes it might it might not be that comfortable for you to write the entire equation. Take your uh, delay time, multiply with this config, tick rate, hertz, divide by 1000. So there's another alternate to this. You can just use a function called pdms to ticks. And in the parameter, you can just use the milliseconds delay that you that you want. Excuse me. So 1,000. So this will give you 1,000 delay. So you don't have to type in all your equation here. If you look into the definition of this function, you can see it does the same thing that you do in that equation. That is your, your input parameter, which is x time in ms. It multiplies it with the stick rate and then divides by 1,000. So it's doing the same thing. So this is another way you can conveniently use your your delays inside your VTOX delay function. It's way more better than typing in the equation like this. Um, there is one more thing that we need to know about the VTOX delay is that um, this delay is not very precise. This is not an accurate delay. Oh, what happens is when you have a VTOX delay then the CPU uh, takes the control from the task 1 and then it gives to the next task which is let's say task 2 or the task 3 and then so on. So by the time it comes back to task one it, it checks if 1000 milliseconds has elapsed or not if not it continues moving to task two and then task three and then back to task one but if 1000 milliseconds has elapsed then it's like okay your delay function is done so now we can move to the next instruction as whatever you have here but um, by the time you come back uh, the time that is elapsed could be a bit over 1000 milliseconds it could go up to 1010 or 1020 milliseconds so VTOS delay will make sure that you get a delay of at least 1000 milliseconds or but not exactly 1000 milliseconds it might be a bit more than that so to use a very precise delay we use another delay function called VTOS delay until VTOS delay until and this function has two parameters the second parameter is going to be exactly this whatever you have in VTOS delay and the first parameter uh, I'm going to create the first parameter here and the parameter type has to be a tick type underscore t and I'm going to call it my last unblock and the value of my last unblock I'm just going to use it here so the address of my last unblock is going to be the first parameter and I can get rid of this actually okay yeah and i need to update the value of my last one block with the cpu tick time so i do that by using my last unblock equals to 
x task get tick count this is a function so yeah so the x task get tick count go value goes into my last on block and then and this is the this is what i use in my first parameter i do not need to put this inside my infinite loop because if i do this just once then this function v task delay until will automatically update the value every time i use this this function v task delay until so i did i don't need to do this again and again inside infinite loop i can just do it once so that's okay so if i go ahead and if i run this program let me set my cpu time back to 1000 okay there are some errors i believe um, okay yeah, the same column okay see so there i go it's printing hello world every one second so i get a delay of precise 1000 milliseconds so just to summarize that VTOSK delay will, will make sure you get a delay of at least the time that you specified, but VTOSK delay until will make sure it is the, exactly the time that you want.